Hey, Cooks, we have a very special guest on the show today. We have Jake, and he's coming straight from Mississippi. And today we are making his family recipe, chicken and sausage gumbo. This is a real deal, folks. We are going to learn today how to make a true Cajun gumbo, and Jake is going to show us how to do it. So welcome to the Amy Learns to Cook Kitchen. Jake, welcome to the kitchen. Thanks for cooking for us today. We're cooking uh, chicken and sausage gumbo. Yeah, so this is, he's a master at cooking gumbo, and this is his famous recipe, right? Straight from Mississippi. So what we're doing with this gumbo, we're starting with the rotisserie chicken, right? Right, I bought two rotisserie t- chickens, deboned it, and we're going to make a bone broth from that, and we're going to put it in this pot and boil it. And why it boils, we're going to take some other steps in the process. Yeah, so one of the ways that you can make a, a faster gumbo is starting with a rotisserie chicken. And what Jake did is he cleaned all the meat off it, and we basically have the carcass. So we're using some commercially prepared broth, and we're going to be using these bones to flavor that broth, right? So we have our stock pot here uh, boiling, and Jake's going to go ahead and put that in, right? Right, and this is just a, uh, a quicker way to make gumbo so you're not in a process of sitting over a stove for four or five hours. It's just a quicker process with the uh, the uh, rotisserie chicken and not having to boil your own chicken and making your own broth. It's just a quick two and a half hour gumbo yeah. recipe. Yeah. So if gumbo has intimidated you, this is a great place to start because we're taking a rotisserie chicken, we're making it quicker, we're using um, commercially prepared stock, and we're going to be flavoring that stock with the bones from the chicken. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to be moving this over to the cooktop so we can start the next part of the dish. So we'll be right back. Okay, cooks, let's get going. So what are we going to do first, Jake? We're going to take this sausage and we're going to put it in the pan and we're going to sweat the oil off the sausage to make like a like a burnt to it. And then uh, we're going to pull that off of there after we uh, sear it. And then we'll go to the next step. But we can go ahead and dump the... Uh... Okay, so we have some andouille sausage. Ooh, right? <laughs> And first step, we're going to obviously brown off this sausage, um, and uh, so it's nice and not crispy, but right. We want we want that nice burnt, caramelized right. uh, flavor on the sausage. So it's not going to take too long. So we're going to uh, we'll be right back when this sausage is ready. Wow, that's looking amazing. Oh, yeah. You hear that sizzle? It's brown and yeah. real nice. We're about to take it out of the pan and, and start with our holy <laughs> trinity and our seasoning. It's like a poor man's spam right here. Oh, my gosh. Like oh, fried yeah. bologna, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> See those little brown bits on there? That's what you want. Yep, you want to sear it real good. But you want to cook thoroughly. So we're going to go ahead and take this out. And we're going to move on to the next step. Mm. I think it's burning the spatula. Whoop. Get you a little bit of fried finger in there, huh? Yeah, it's <laughs> no more, fried finger, yeah, right? more, That's more flavor. That's your secret ingredient. Yeah, yeah. Savor the flavor right there. There you go. Mm-hmm. You didn't see this, though. Ah! Oh, yeah. I couldn't take a little space. I ain't, it's, it ain't no hot it's too hot. Okay, we have a whole bunch of butter. <laughs> That's right. Woo! We was going to do half, but the special. You want to put a little olive oil yeah, in there? Yeah, we can add a little olive oil in there. So this there will raise go. the smoke point a little bit. Wow. Coats the pan, keeps it from burning. What we got here cooking, we got uh, two sticks of celery, one and a half onions, one bell pepper, and we got a clove of garlic. Yeah. Four or five cloves of garlic. But we're going to add all the green and the onion and leave the garlic for last because we don't want to burn the garlic. The garlic's the last thing you want to cook because you don't want to burn. You don't want that burned garlic taste in there. So this is what's known as the Cajun Holy Trinity, huh? That's right. 
so some of us have seen like a Holy Trinity maybe as a Miraflock, which it's a little different because it has carrot. This is similar except it's bell pepper instead of carrot. So we're going to go ahead and... Keep that onion off. I mean, uh, yeah. what we could do is we could take this right here and just, we're going to take it and flip it all off the paper right in there. Mm. You know what's yeah. getting good when the onions and bell peppers are in. Yeah. <laughs> but they almost done already. We ain't even had them in there for nothing but a minute. And you smell it already. Yeah. And like I said, we're going to leave our garlic into the last right before this starts browning. Yeah, garlic will have a tendency of burning. Mm, like it's doing right now. The butter got too hot, but it'll be all right. So we're going to go ahead and saute this until it's translucent. Okay, so what are we doing next? We're going to use some olive oil, a third of a cup, and then we're going to use three-fourths of a cup of flour. It, it really depends on, I mean, how long you want to sit in front of the pot and cook roux. Okay, so we're making our roux, right? This is a foundation of gumbo and also a lot of other dishes is the roux. Um, don't be intimidated by roux, right? It's just getting it to the right color so you bring that richness into the stew or into the gumbo. And um, you keep it at that right flame also because if, if you hire the flame, you're going to have to sit here over the pot and keep cooking. You're not going to be able to walk away. So you get your nice flame. Mm -hmm. Once you get the roux and you pour it in there, then you know adjust your flame. You can sit and check it every 10 minutes. You can stand here with the flame higher and do it every two to three minutes. Or you can put it on high and sit here until you get that caramel and then, then your roux done quick, but then you're taking a chance of it burning. And then, you know, once it starts to get a little hot, you let your roux get a little hot. That's what it's doing now. Mm. And then you take your flour and you pour your flour in there. When you pour, first pour it in, it's going to, you know, it's going to look like it's caking up, but it's not. It'll come to, see how it's starting to swivel, look like a rising dough. That's what you want it to look like. And even though it looks like it's, looks like that you're going to break it down and if it's getting to look like that you can add a little more olive oil if we have to yeah you got a little more olive oil we'll add a little more to it okay so we're going to put a little bit more olive oil yeah just tell there me when go. that's good right there okay you see it's getting that a nice look to it so a roux is sort of like fundamental to gumbo culture, right? Right, absolutely. Once you learn the technique of making a roux, you can apply that to a lot of different dishes because it's a basis of a gravy, right? So your roux is going to develop over time. One of the things you'll notice now is, see how blonde that roux is? That's kind of called a blonde roux. And this would be the basis of a white sauce. So if you're making uh, uh, biscuits and gravy, right? Right, biscuits and gravy. <laughs> or a white gravy, um, you would use a blonde roux like this. So you would cook it maybe a little farther than this stage, but you want it to be this sort of color. As the roux develops, it's going to develop more color. So it's going to get darker, it's going to get amber, it's going to get brown, to the point where it's going to be dark, like chocolate, right? That takes a long time. So be right patient with it, right? right? Because the love that you put into your roux is the love that's going to come back out of that dish when you're wow. eating it, that's right? right. So right. the roux is like fundamental for creating this dish as well as a lot of other different dishes. So this is a great skill to learn to master because you can go everywhere from a roux, right? Right. It's all about the patience. You, like I said, get your get your flame set. And when you see them bubbles in that roux like that, I can walk away for a while because I'm kind of got the my mm -hmm. flame adjusted where I wanted to. So I've had to go over here and check on some of the seasoning that I'm cooking up right now to put it in. See, it's not burning and it's kind of like, I call it the pancake bubbles. <laughs> and once you get them right there, you just stir it. You know, I'm able to walk around, you know, like I could set it down like here and walk over here and check on the uh, Holy Trinity while we're still cooking that up. But like I said, the, the, the gumbo is all set on this fundamental root cooking it looks like a technique. It looks like pancake batter. Well, yeah, it does. It does. It does. It does. See, if you look at it, it's starting to 
really just getting to that start and that caramel. Now, you can always turn it up, but you're going to have to sit here and, and you're going to have to cook it faster where you're scraping the pot like that. Here, you see it's kind of like it's not burning and it's closing up. You know, if, it, if, it, if that's a good temperature right there, probably about, you know, not, not too low, but right in between medium and low. And if you look there, you see it's starting to caramel at the bottom when I'm swiping. So, I mean, you got your, your pans heated. It's kind of like cooking bacon, you know, you find that good temperature and you ain't got to, you can walk away from bacon and your, your house ain't going to catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we will be back as the roux develops and we'll show you the stages of the roux and how far we need to take it um, for a gumbo. So right now we're at the blonde stage. We'll be back as this caramelizes. So Derek, I see we getting a little bit of color to it. Yeah, that's that's just that uh, that heating up. That's what it does to it. You know, I had to actually turn the flame down a little bit because it started, you started smelling it. I mean, is that's that's where, you know, you got to stand at the pot and, and know what you're doing with the flour, because if not, it gets that too. Even at a caramel stage, you can burn the flour and then you'll have that burnt taste. And then after that, you just throw it away and go buy the sword pot gumbo <laughs> out of the jar. And we'll try this again when you're ready one day, you know. Yeah. But, you know, the stores do carry it and some stores don't carry it. And, you know, when you get this far up north, a lot of stores don't carry the, the, the jar of gumbo in a jar that's already caramel. It's too dark. Me, I like to, to to roll the gumbo right right past caramel, right in between the the uh, caramel stage and the dark dark stage. I like that light because it's a chicken and sausage gumbo, and um and when it starts to come together and you start to put all the seasoning, and you know the, the the flour will accept the tastes and, and the spices when you get it up and boiling and, and into that good gumbo flavor. But yeah, it's starting to caramel real good. I, I turn I turn the flame down. And, yeah, you know, turn it off. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> it did. It turned off. Look at that. I, well, yeah. it, well, it said it was on, so I'm like, yeah, what's going on here? I mean, it's but you know, you want that when you circle it. You want that. You don't want to see it burning. You want to see it actually coming back together. If it ain't coming back together, then the pan is too hot. Right. So so when you scrape across the pan, it'll come back together. Right. That, right? That's what you want to see. Now, if it ain't coming back together, that means you got the flame too high. Okay. And, you know, and then if you got it high and as long as you're doing this, then what you're doing is you're not letting it, letting it get hot enough, but it's hot enough, but it's, it's going to burn it if you don't do that. So doing this when you got it high, it's actually going to help it. But like I said, low and slow is, is going to get your best results. And you will find out that whenever you first start cooking it, Rue, there is a um, technique to it. So if you're not ready to do it, like I said, you can buy your star bought gumbo in a jar. <laughs> kind of like gravy in a jar right right it's kind of like gravy in a jar and they got different flavors they got cajun they got you know the dark <clears throat> root they got the light root they got the caramel it's just it's you know like i said it, it's a it's a process and even though this is a fast this is a fast cooking what i'm doing with the gumbo it's the roux is the longest process it's really like a two and a half hour then this is easy because i'm not boiling the chicken and i'm not making my own mm -hmm. uh, chicken stock and everything so this is you know it's going from four and a half hours cooking the roux to down to two and a half with just cutting all the seasoning and getting everything over there prepared so i mean you cut down times a lot less okay so as this develops we'll be back wow jake it looks like peanut butter now well no it's it's starting to do a stage turning so i mean we're at the uh little darker than caramel i mean it's starting to so what you want to do is just let it sit, and then when it starts bubbling, that, that the bottom's grazing a little brown. So that's when you want to stir it up a little bit. You see how it's real coming coming together really slow. Yeah, that's that's you can if you want you can turn the heat up just a tad, but not much. But like I said, you really want that. You know, when you get to the bottom, you see how it's starting to. It's a beautiful color. Right, right. It's going to get prettier than that. And like I said, you see how it's starting to. Look a little pastry in there, like a peanut butter texture. That's what you want to see. And if you have to, if it looks a little too watery, you add pinches of flour. Don't add cups. Don't add thirds. Mm -hmm. Just add a little pinch because the flour is just like you put liquid in flour. It's gonna it's gonna thicken up. We don't want to make soup here, right? Right, right. You put flour and in, in, in liquid. That's I mean that's what a roux is. You can have a thick roux. You can have a a non thick roux. But when you're chick doing chicken gumbo chicken and sausage gumbo you want i like my roux a little runnier 
I don't really like it thick because I'm not trying to make a gravy. I'm trying to make a roux yeah. for the flavor. And, I, and that's what we're looking for. So I turned up the heat a little bit. And uh, I may add a pinch of flour. Don't know yet. I'm not to that stage of adding. But like I said, you want to see them bubbles in that flour. That's when you know you're, you're getting what you're looking for. Looks good. It's coming along. So what what what'd you do? I added two or three pinches in there. And what it did is it thickened it up a little bit because I noticed I was had a little bit too much oily run to it. So what it does, it just thickens it up so it'll give a little more of that um, browning texture and just keep the flame at the same and just keep going with it. You'll always have to tune it. You know, I don't think anybody can make a perfect roux without tuning it the way, and everybody does it different. So if you want to tune it, you don't have to. If you want to stand here and, and keep cooking it to the, to the likes of your gumbo, then that's fine. But, you, you know, you, you put a little more flour in there so you don't have that oil-based gumbo instead of a roux gumbo. And we're yeah. also not making cookie dough either. Right, right. This ain't chocolate chips, you know. <laughs> we don't want the oil because it'll just sit on the top of the soup. Right. You see how behind the traces of the turn, you, you're starting to get that that stick to it that's 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 coming along that's getting our browning starting to turn right into that starting to get a little darker it's looking good yeah i think we're in for a treat congratulations you just got the peanut gallery uh involved yeah it was the peanut gallery right, just right. Um, <laughs> I mean, we could actually code co- co- this with you know a uh, snicker caramel bar you know it's just no it looks nice right looks pretty yeah, so see when see when I was talking about the pancake bubbles, it's starting to come yeah. along. What you do is you scrape it up, and you see how it's turning brown. Mm-hmm. That's why you don't want to let it sit there too long. That's why you want to stay stirring. You see how you see the brown? Yeah. Now you go back to stirring. It's been sitting there for a minute. You come around here and you get it stirred back in pretty good. You see how the oil's cooking out of it? You want to get all that right oil there. back in, right? There. And now it's starting. You see how the pot's hot, hot. Because you're not serving. So what you can do is you see how you get that hot. You just turn the flame down a little bit. Do you tend to have to uh, stir it more at this stage than you do at the beginning? Well, you because see, of that? once you see how the pot got, how you see a little steam. Once you, once you get to that, once you feel that, then yeah, because what's going to happen is then you're going to burn it and you'll get that burn. But see, if, if you go back to let it, you see how it's got a little pace to it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want to stir it. You don't have that smooth look no more. So, And as you look, it's starting to get, it's starting to make its way into that that dark you see how it's starting yeah it has right. a little elm a little side like streaks of the chocolate right yeah. right see it's start it's starting to the heat's starting to bind it together and, and starting to make it turn its colors and it's starting to hit that right temperature and heating element if you get distracted because you got all this wonderfulness over on the cooktop over there you, you, can, you gotta run back here really quick and start stirring right so what you could do is like i said if you're gonna over there you just turn it down turn turn the flame down the back where you can go over there and do your stirring over there and come back and check on it and that's what happened i was over there cooking and i come back over here and, and you didn't kill it no it was pretty no it yeah. kind of goes back it's all flame it's all you know yeah. techniques and it, yeah you know, it just takes time. So don't, don't go and think you're about to make a rule and it's going to be right down the road. Oh, I'm going to be done in 10 minutes. That's not. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I got news for people. This is not, this is like grit. There's no such thing as instant rule. <laughs> right, right. If you want that, go get the McCormick's uh, gravy mix <laughs> <laughs> and add a little Tony's. <laughs> So it's really starting to develop. Right, it is. It's starting to get that. Well, you know, we're almost to the point to where, you know, this is the way I like it. Maybe a couple more, maybe five, another five minutes, and and this will be ready. But, like, you know, you just let it sit there with the flame. It's, it's like the mighty to... water in the Mississippi right, right now, right. right? Call it a dirt <laughs> pod. It's almost like a cow patty color, you know? <laughs> So do you take it all the way to the chocolate stage, like dark, or do no, you do no. it? See, it's starting. It's starting to brown now. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it a little bit light, a little, little bit more darker than this, and and then we'll start adding all, all our uh, seasonings and everything, and starting to, starting to really get into the. Does it kind of depend on the meats and stuff that you're using in it? So what I do is I like to fry everything and boil everything over there, and then what I'll do is I'll come put the Holy Trinity in here, and I'll put the sausage. And then, you know, I'll pour a little bit of a, uh, you know, whether it's a chicken broth or mm-hmm. I'll boil my own chicken broth or, or put the, and I'll let it sit in there. And what I do is I'll let it sit in there and absorb all the flavors. And then that's once you, once you get ready to your last stage, you put your chicken in there and then you can let it sit for an hour. But we're not even there yet. We're at the cow patty stage. <laughs> 
Well, it's looking good. Oh yeah, about another five minutes, and we'll we'll kick it up and show y'all what it's gonna look like right before we. Uh, but yeah, it's getting that nice brown. Yeah. You know, most like a what you call a candy bar. They trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> See how I opened it up and it's got like brown hints burnt to the flower. That's what the flower does, burn the root to bring it to your taste. So you keep flipping it. See how it's got the brown? Yeah. In it? See how? And you just, there you go. As you go back to stirring it, you see how it's starting to turn into a paste. That's what you want to see is that paste. When it gets down to that, starting to look that paste color, that's whenever you got to start, you know, stirring it more because, yeah, it's going to start turning a darker color, but it can also burn it. So you can turn your flame down if you want to stand up a little longer. Turn your flame down and keep stirring. I do see how like the oil separates. It does separate, but you you want to you want to do that because what happens is as as the oil separates, the flour cooks. If if we sit here and watch, the oil will, will go out to the sides of the pan, and then it, like I said, the pancake it'll make a round pancake, and I flip it up, and you can see the brown of the roux. And we'll just sit here for a minute and let you watch. And you can actually smell when it's time to come over here and start twisting on it again. That smell right before it starts burning. See, yeah, you, don't start, you start to see, you see how it's starting to look thick. You see the bubbles in there. Mm -hmm. the, all the oil is starting to ride to the outside of the pan. So this is what, see how it's starting to look brown. Yeah. And that's what you want. You know, you, you don't, you don't smell it burning, but you smell that, you know, that I can't even just des describe the smell, but you know, it's about to burn if you don't start stirring it. They'll know it when they smell it. Right. And then it'll be a waste of, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes, whatever you stand up. And then you'll be like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go to the store and buy the Carmex. It's <laughs> a Cajun season. And I ain't doing this again. Don't give up like that. If something happens and you burn your roux, go back right back to it. Um, because it's a learning process. Cooking is a learning process. Temperature control. He's been on like a low for a very long low, time. Low, yeah. Very low. You could put it on high, but like I said, it's going to be a lot of stirring. And you ain't going to be able to, you're going to be able to do this the whole time if it's on high. Because you don't want it to burn. See, I'm actually getting to where the, the pan's caramel and the caramel's the bottom of the, the roux and I can lift it up. See, it's, it's liquid right now. So we back to that. I got my flame at the right temperature. You want to bring it back to that caramel. You want to get the oil flowing. We're about probably another two minutes in, and, and we're going to be mixing our seasoning with it. And that's the color that I like my sausage and chicken gumbo. Right outside the caramel. You're into more almost like a, I don't know, like an almond butter. A dark almond butter. Looks good. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we added our onions, bell pepper, and Garlic. back into the roux. Ooh, yeah. look at that. You smell it. You got that flour, you know, burning, browning. It's all over with. Now, look, you see how you, you put that in there, and it kind of just does a mixture. It just yeah. tightens it up. If you look at the roux now, it's, it's doing its thing. And I don't even think the pot's just still hot. That just lets you know how hot the pot was. You know, yeah, now, just, now, look look, look at the browning, how, how it... We dumped that in there and it, it brought it a little darker because it was still hot. So yeah, it's a little darker than what I like, but I mean, that's more like almost like a seafood where you put crabs and oysters and shrimp and, and all that in there. But it, it brought it back to a, a darker. There you go. Hmm. Just You just want to just put a little bit in there. Then you see how quick it darkened up when you add it? Yeah, that in that's a... Right. All right, that's all we need. Just a okay. little... Just to get it to where it's going, so you cool it down. And there we go. You see, mm -hmm. you smell it it's starting to yeah. you can add a little more into it. See, and that's that's that root. That's where I tell you the flower. You see how it's thickening up? Yeah, you don't want it, you thickens don't want up it fast, real fast. And your root's done. Your vegetables, and you know, I'll pour my holy trinity in there so you can go ahead and grab it right off the bat. See, it's, it's thickening up real nice. You want to bring the broth over? Yeah, we got to peel the. Uh, I got to take the bones out of there. We're going to bring the broth, but yeah, you can dump some more in there. Just go ahead and dump it all in there, that whole 32 ounce. There you go. All right. You're saying that flour is going to grab all that liquid? It's, no, it's, it's getting to the stage where we, you want to add enough to where that flour, mm -hmm. you know, you keep the flour, you pour your whole trinity in there, you let it turn a little, little darker, but you see how it, 
you got that liquid in there turning the back to that caramel look. So, so you want to keep stirring it like that. We got the flame on it, so it's going to break that flour down. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, we got our, um, where I took the two, two rotisserie chickens and I, uh, did more like a bone broth. I put it in there and kind of broke the, uh, the flavor of the chicken out of the bone. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take, remove them two, uh, chicken stocks out of there and we're going to, we're going to put the rest of it in here. Let's see how it's got that nice caramel look to it. That's what that's mm -hmm. that's what I'm looking for with chicken and sausage gumbo. And you know, seafood gumbos, I like to go a little bit darker. But that's what we have right now. We can go ahead and add the sausage in too. See, so yeah, we just showed you from you know pouring a little bit of liquid out. It was still, you know, still had to still had to like um this to it. But you see how it's starting to thicken up again? Mm -hmm. And that's what I say. It's just a, it's just a process you got to go and we're gonna transfer this over to a bigger pan here in a minute and uh, we'll just go from chicken. there, right? Okay, right. we'll do that and we'll be back. Okay, so what did we do, Jake? We transferred it into a bigger pot because we're gonna add the bone stock that we uh, that we put on the stove earlier and then we was letting it get done. But now we're gonna add it in. If you look, it's still kind of a little thick after we added that 32 ounce. Now it's still like a gravy type. So that's still too thick. And like I said, I like it. I like it with a, a little more water to it. Okay. So we're gonna add this bone stock to it. We're gonna see what it looks like. And after we add the bone stock to it, we're gonna add it in there. And that's why we're gonna let it cook for a little long. And we may have to add another, you know, uh, you see now it's, it's a little watery, so that's about that's good for right now. And uh, we'll let it simmer for 45 minutes, and uh, through the through the simmering, we will uh, add or we'll just wait for it's done and go ahead and eat it. But this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna add we're gonna add uh, two teaspoons, two tables two tablespoons of salt, two tablespoons of pepper, a pinch of cayenne. Mm. <laughs> two tablespoons of onion powder, two tablespoons of garlic powder, and to your taste, whatever Cajun season you want, Tony's, Louisiana, um, slap your mama, and the list goes on, two tablespoons of that. And then what we want to do is we want to stir it up, mm. and after this we're about to Add the chicken and let it sit for 45 minutes, and we will be back to let you know how this turns out. So we're going to put the chicken in now? Yeah, we're going to put the chicken okay. in now. Okay, so now we're going to put the chicken back in. The deboned chicken's going back in. The chicken mm. and sausage gumbo. So even if you don't have a roast history chicken, you can just take a whole chicken and roast it in the oven? You can roast it. In, what, what I usually do, you can take the chicken, lay quarters, and boil a whole bag of them and make your chicken stock from right there and let it boil while you're mixing your roux and cutting your holy trinity up. You can be making your own stock instead of using sodium-free stock, you know, whatever your choice, however long you want to stand in the kitchen for. But this is just <laughs> a simple two-hour roux when you do it, and it's, it's, it's real fast, so... Mm. Hope you enjoy the recipe or enjoy what I showed you. And it's going to taste good. good. So now it's going to cook for about 45 minutes. It's going to combine all those flavors and get yummy, right? Yummy. So we will be back. And we have something unique that we're going to be serving this with. It's sort of a regional variation. Right. It's what Southern Louisianans use with their gumbo. Do. Yeah, that's what we do. So... This is going to get tasty, and we'll be back to eat some gumbo. So look at the gumbo. It looks amazing. We're ready to plate it up. Are you guys ready to eat? Yeah. 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 Come on. <laughs> okay, cooks, it's gumbo time, right? We're all ready to go. And Jake has his world-famous potato salad in here, which is kind of unique because I've never had gumbo with potato salad only rice but it's like a regional thing isn't it yeah yeah it's a down south thing some people like rice but i like i like using potato salad <laughs> ever since i tried it i've never put rice back in it and i can't say <laughs> shh, that i took a little taste and trust me <laughs> 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 
So we're going to put the potato salad in first, right? Right. Or you could, you could do either or, but I mean, I like to put the potato salad in first. And then what I do is I... Oh, yeah. Take the chicken and pour it right on top. And then come over with some chives. Look at that. That looks amazing. Yes, it does. That's uh, <laughs> that's the way I eat it, man. Chicken wow. gumbo with potato salad. We're seriously going to have a treat here. So let's grab uh, some utensils so we can have a taste. Okay, cooks, it's gumbo time. So um, we have our amazing chicken and sausage gumbo here. Um, started out with a really rich, delicious roux. I think that's like the key, right? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's the uh, that's the base. That's the foundation of mm -hmm. gumbo. Is the is the roux that you make. Um, and so we have nice tender chicken. We have delicious sausage, and we have his very special potato salad, right? Yeah, it's yeah, it's a it's a recipe. <laughs> he won't tell me what that is, but I did see him put bacon in there. So right, mm -hmm. it is good. So use your family's favorite, right? Right. So yeah, mm. that is so good. So yeah, good. I surprised myself with that one. You me. cannot go to a restaurant. You can't buy this in the store. If you want great gumbo, you have to make it yourself. Self. Yes. And yeah. it is so good. It's worth spending the time to develop that room. Wow. It's just the taste. You're looking for that taste. Yep. And everybody won't acquire it on the first go. It's going to take time. It takes time to but learn to make that gumbo. The roux is, the, roux is the, the hardest part. Everything else is... Peas and carrots. The gumbo masters have made it like a hundred times, right? So right. if you don't get it right on the first time, please try again. Because when you develop that skill and you make gumbo the way you like it, there's nothing like it. No, there isn't. And every time it'll taste a little different every time. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people season theirs to teaspoons and half a tea. And I, and I did it this time, but usually I'm got cans and salt shakers and cayenne pepper and everything running every which way and so i just went ahead and gave y'all a estimate of what y'all need to use and it's it's a it's a mild gumbo it's not too hot mm -hmm. family will enjoy it delicious um, perfect time of the year this is comfort food yeah. this is comfort food at its finest, right? Yes, it is. Thank you, Jake. I appreciate it. We are on our way to eat some gumbo. Thanks uh, for joining what us. What about us? You all, you all can have some. Right, right. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Got it on the front of me.